where Pinterest stands apart is the types of images we have tend to be not user generated photos. They're not like selfies. They're not uh, photos that you're taking with your camera or phone, but for the most part, they're professionally shot photography. And that makes the process of extracting these embeddings, these representations quite a bit easier because it tend to be a you know, cleaner input images from a, a computer vision perspective. So in the early stage of this, uh, I think uh, uh, for those who are interested in product development, but also product research, how did you identify that this was something important for the users? Like what type of insights did you have? Was it a, a working hypothesis? So it was a, a, a process where you say, mm, maybe if we do this, uh, users will, 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 will enjoy it. So basically you have just an hypothesis, you do the experiment and you find out that that thing works. The other way of doing it could be there's some data that we're analyzing and we see an early trend. How did the idea came about? For Pinterest specifically, we saw massive popularity of a product called related products. So basically underneath each Pinterest pin, there were some set of recommendations and users really liked kind of just exploring that way. Find me something similar to this, uh, to, to this pin. But we got two complaints. One, the results tended not to be exact. They were just kind of semantically related, but not visually exactly the same thing. And secondly, if this was a more complex scene, like a fashion outfit, there was no way to, to just say, oh, I really like this hat, or I really like the jacket that this person is wearing. I just want to search for that. There was no way to basically say, give me this image plus the text token jacket. There's no way to do that kind of selection. So we saw this user pattern that was not getting fulfilled. And that's the first step towards building visual search that, that, that we saw this problem. I got on Pinterest and the first thing I searched was for private chats and then yachts. And so like basically now when you go into my uh, Pinterest page, there are only yachts and uh, planes and uh, like the most interesting thing I would never see like never, never, never find these things in, 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 in Google. Maybe because I would not even think about it. But the, it's the fact that my Pinterest account is just about that now. It's evolved that way. What do you think about this? I mean, can it be kind of an interaction between the, 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 the user that it makes the user basically thinking of the product in a certain way and then they come back only for a certain uh, experience? You can certainly get into the rabbit hole of onboarding your Pinterest app with a very narrow view of what you're searching for and then have that dominate your home feed. We, of course, have tools to allow you to diversify the, the type of content that, that you're seeing. I think there is something really interesting about having representations that capture what is the kind of visual content that this user likes. And that is a huge part of how we generate really personalized home feeds for, for our users. The content that you're seeing on your home feed at Pinterest is not coming from, for the most part, from your friends. It's being just retrieved across the entire corpus of billions of unique pins. And one of the ways in which we try to do that is by seeing like, what are your interests? How can we get really high quality visual representations or embeddings as we call them in the industry and find content that matches that really well? But in terms of branching out into new, uh, new categories, yeah, there's definitely tools that allow you to do that within the Pinterest home feed. And I, I think that's, that's true of any home feed type service where you have a long feed. They're all incentivized to have a more broad range of topics or interests that, that you are following. With visual search, the first uh, really important step is this process of finding a visual representation. Um, again, this is this term called embeddings that is extremely pervasive throughout the ML community. But you train models that take in images and find representations, kind of intermediate, lower dimensional representations. Because if you think about an image, it's maybe like 500 by 500 pixels. It's a very high dimensional object. And the secret sauce to answer your question that, that's required is how do you reduce that dimensionality to maybe a thousand dimensions or 500 dimensions. So something much smaller. Um, so th this process is called representation learning. It's been completely revolutionized by 
deep learning starting in 2012. And what we basically do is take every single image on Pinterest, find a smaller, more compressed representation, and be able to compare image A, image B, find how similar they are, uh, and do that at scale across billions of images. And there's a bunch of algorithms to help speed this up, but that's basically the, the underlying foundation. And what is really required of this is a pretty high quality image data set. I think where Pinterest stands apart is the types of images we have tend to be not user generated photos. They're not like selfies. They're not uh, photos that you're taking with your camera or phone, but for the most part, they're professionally shot photography. And that makes the process of extracting these embeddings, these representations quite a bit easier because it tend to be a you know, cleaner input images from a, a computer vision perspective. There's a strong correlation between being able to correctly predict labeled ML tasks and the quality of the representation that the model learns. So what I mean by that is if I feed in a bunch of cat and dog images and the labels are cat or dog and over time as I train this model, let's say I have some labeled data, it becomes more proficient at this particular task. The representation starts doing a really good job of capturing concepts or at least statistical variations within the images that correspond to cats or dogs respectively. So if we can optimize our model on these label tasks, and I give a very simple one here, which is cat or a dog, but in reality, we are optimizing on dozens of different tasks simultaneously, and they become extremely complex over time. But uh, the core idea is the same. As you become more and more proficient at predicting something with this model, the interpretation or representation of the content becomes better and better. And for the second part, like how do we know that these representations are actually useful? Well, we, we do have a pretty specific evaluation task, which is, uh, I sometimes refer to this as kind of the needle in the haystack problem, which is, uh, let's say I have a toy data set with a million images where I have a query image and I have a, a candidate image somewhere hidden in that million image data set. Can we make sure that the most similar uh, two pieces of content are the query and that needle in a haystack candidate image? So if I have a very specific chair as my query and I have a million other images of chairs, and only one of them is kind of the exact product match, uh, can we make sure that that exact product match is as similar as possible, more similar than every other pair between the query and the result? So in technical terms, this is uh, basically precision at one, uh, where we try to find out of all the possible examples, are we finding the most important one as the most similar so we use this pretty extensively at Pinterest to measure the quality of these inter interpretations or representations and make sure we're kind of headed in the right direction because that's really the core problem that you're trying to solve with visual search.